This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I just think in the name of Jesus, if we will just spend time in His presence, and as we spend time in His presence, man, when you show up, signs will show up, miracles will show up. Why? Because He showed up. You got to let Him show up in your life every day, and you got to show up, and that's what you do. You focus on your relationship with Him. And you start looking at everything, you quit asking for stuff because you're like, I got the most vital person in the world on the inside of me, the Holy Spirit. The whole, my relationship as a Christian is not about how much I know. It's not about how much I got. My relationship with the Holy Spirit is that I know Him. I know Him. He knows me. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, and uh, verse 27. Of course, we are continuing uh, another segment of this message and teaching on how to hear from God. It's important that we know that it is God's will to speak to us, and it is God's will for us to be able to hear Him. Well, well tonight, I want to I carry on some things here, but I want to talk about the hindrances to hearing from God. A lot of times people, they want to hear from God, but they don't recognize those things that challenge their hearing, those things that may even clog up their hearing, those things that might hinder uh, the, the, the voice of God from being heard. Now, the problem is never going to be with God speaking. God's always speaking. The issue is uh, whether or not we pick up the transmission, uh, whether or not there's something that's blocking our hearing. And so uh, tonight I want to I deal with the five hindrances to hearing from God, and I want to uh, start in Proverbs 20, verse 27, and he says this, Proverbs 20 and 27, he says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Now, that, that really got me years ago when I began to look at this, the spirit of man. Now, please understand, and I'll repeat this again, that man is a three-part being. Man is a spirit. He doesn't have a spirit. He is a spirit. He possesses a soul. That's his mind, will, and his motions. That's your thinker, your chooser, and your filler. And he lives in a physical body. That is the three parts of a man. He is a spirit. He possesses a soul. He lives in a physical body. Now, according to this scripture, he says that, that the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. Now, think about it. When, when the power goes off in your house and you go grab a candle, you light that candle. That candle provides guidance. It allows you to move around without hurting yourself or injuring yourself. It, it allows you to see the pathway. It, it allows you to see, you know, where you're going. And so, he says that he's going to use the spirit of man like, like a candle. So we use a candle, what, to, to enlighten us in the midst of darkness. The spirit of a man, the Bible says, is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Now, what are some things that can, can um, hinder that process? God wants to lead you by your spirit. God wants to show you some things by your spirit. God wants to say to you, mm, not a good time. God wants to say to you, mm, back up, hold up. 
God wants to lead you by your spirit. In other words, guidance. That candle will help you to be led and, and to help guide you when, when you can't see certain things uh, in, in, with, your natural, with your natural eye. So number one, here's the first hindrance to hearing from God, unbelief, unbelief. Now you gotta understand everything in the kingdom of God operates by faith. Everything in God's kingdom operates and is gonna be successful because believers are believing. But when you walk in unbelief, there, there are lots of things that won't work, including your ability to pick up the transmission. Now, like I said, the problem is not gonna be with God. The problem is, is when unbelief is there in your heart. You know, the Bible refers to a, a heart filled with unbelief belief as an evil heart, an evil heart. Why is it evil? Because it's filled with unbelief. Look at this scripture. I wanna show these two scriptures to you in uh, the Amplified. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12 in the Amplified Bible. And then in that same chapter, we'll just go down to verse 19. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12. Now, now check this out now. This area of unbelief can be so, so wicked, twisted. Uh, Hebrews 3 verse 12 says, Therefore, beware, brethren, take care, lest there be in any one of you a wicked unbelieving heart, which refuses to cleave to, refuses to trust in and rely on him. And it, it leads you to turn away and desert or stand aloof from the living God. Now notice that, that last part of that scripture. It leads you to stand apart or to stand away from the living God. So notice you're, you're, you're not receiving the transmission because that wicked, evil heart of unbelief is leading you to stand apart, stand aloof from God. So unbelief can't be present and you pick up the transmission from God. Now look at verse 19 in that same chapter in the Amplified. <clears throat> he says this, Hebrews 3, 19. So we see that they were not able to enter into his rest. Why? Because of their unwillingness to adhere to and to trust in and to rely on God Unbelief had shut them out. Unbelief had shut them out. And, and I'm telling you, the word of the Lord, the guidance that God wants to provide uh, with your spirit, he says your unbelief cuts you out. You're cut out. You're, <laughs> man, that's just, you, you know, God, one word from God that you pick the transmission up can change your life. But unbelief will, will shut you out will shut you out of a word that could save your life, a word that could prosper you, a word that can make the difference in your business, a difference in relationship, but you're being shut out because of, the, because of unbelief. And I'm telling you right now, in the earth today, there's more unbelief in this earth today than I have ever seen before. And people are being shut out. They're hearing everything except the nourishing, loving word from God. And so unbelief is a hindrance to hearing from God. Here's the second hindrance uh, from hearing from God. An undeveloped spirit. An undeveloped spirit. Go to 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. I want to re reemphasize this triune man. An undeveloped spirit. Now, please understand something, that, that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you through your spirit and you're going to understand a little later that your conscience is the voice of your spirit. So what happened is you got born again and, 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 and he moved in you, you got in him. And where's that taking place? That's taking place in the area of your spirit, man. In him we move, in him we breathe, in him we have our very being. So the Holy Spirit, we are sealed we are sealed in the Holy Spirit. Well, what part of that? It's your spirit, man, that part of you. Now, look what he says here. He says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, all one peace, and that I pray, God, your whole spirit, your whole soul, your whole body will be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Here again, it's making it very clear of the triune being of man, of the tripart or man, three parts of man, spirit, soul, body, that you are a spirit. You have to understand that. You are a spirit being, 
and, and if you are undeveloped in that area. In other words, that new creation in you, uh, it, ha it needs to be trained to work with the Holy Spirit, trained to commune and operate with the Holy Spirit. And, and, and when, you, when you do that, when, you're, when your spirit man is trained in the Word of God, then your conscious now uh, will be the voice of that, praise God. And if you begin to train your spirit in that, then all of a sudden your consciousness becomes a reliable uh, lead. In other words, you can trust it to lead and guide you in this, in this physical world. Now, now look at this in Romans 8, verse 14, Romans 8, verse 14 and 16. So we must develop our spirit. We must develop our spirit. I, 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 I used to get a little mixed up with this because I thought, well, you know, I'm born again, I'm perfect. Yeah, absolutely, but the perfect part of me is my attachment to the Spirit of God. I'm, I'm sealed with Him, praise God. And, 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 and not that I'm flawed in my new creation, but I need to begin to develop my new creation to work alongside and in concert with the Holy Spirit. And so he says here in verse 14, Romans 8, 14, he says, For as many as are led, there it is, by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God. So your spirit being led by the Holy Spirit of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of, the, of God. Your spirit, your new creation being led by the Spirit of God. That's a powerful thing. That, that's something that we want people to get a hold of, that my spirit, man, my new creation is going to be led by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost moved on the inside. Somebody's thinking, well, he's on the inside of your body. No, he moved on the inside of the real you, and the real you is a spirit man. Now, see, some of you think, well, I don't know if I get this. See, that's what I'm saying. We, you got to get into the Word. Hopefully, I have some time to show you that the Word will tune your hearing. And the more you hear the Word, you recognize I'm a spirit being. I possess a soul. I live in the body. And the Holy Spirit is going to lead my spirit. That's why he moved in to my spirit so he can lead and guide me through my spirit man. And from my spirit man, uh, the dictates from the Holy Ghost begin to move into my consciousness, and my conscious mind becomes the voice of my spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 16. He says, the spirit himself beareth witness with our spirits. That's, that's what's going on there. The Holy Spirit now is bearing witness with your spirit that we're the children of God. And so the Holy Spirit's bearing witness to your spirit, man, and when there's an agreement now with your spirit, so there's going to be an agreement with your born-again spirit and the Holy Spirit. They're going to be together. And so what they've got to do is they've got to transform, transfer that oneness into your soul, and then your soul, because it's being renewed with the Word of God, is now lining up with the Spirit and the Holy Ghost, glory to God, and now your body will just do what it's told to do. Oh, my goodness, that's when we become powerful beings. You know, I asked the Lord the other day, I said, Lord, I want people to believe. And, and, and I, I read in the Bible where there are signs and wonders and people being raised from the dead. Oh, Father, I just thank you. Show me what I need to do so we can see those signs and wonders. And, and you know how God is. I, I got quiet and he said, son, I already told you. I said, what? He said, he said, you know what you need for signs and wonders and miracles so people might believe? I said, and I thought, yeah, Lord, you told me. It's you. <laughs> It's your presence. It's you. It's not, it's not doing something to try to deserve, deserve something. It's just abiding in me. It's just abiding in me and me abiding in you. And when you show up somewhere, you show up with me, praise God. You show up with my influence that's influenced your spirit, that's influenced your soul, that's influenced your consciousness, praise God. And you'll hear me clearly to what needs to be done and signs and wonders and miracles. He says, so what you focus on is your relationship with me, not on what you need to do in order to get something to happen so you can deserve it, praise God. I say, I got you. I got you. So my... My, 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 my communication time has now moved to a communion time to now has moved to a time where I am just fellowshipping with him and I ain't looking for nothing but him. Glory to God. I ain't looking for nothing but him. So when I show up and I've been noticing that people have been kind of weirded out, I'm like, you know, I wonder what's going on. 
and, 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 and they about to cry. And I, I was doing an interview with this woman one time, and she was sitting down, and, and she just started shaking and started trembling. I look at her, I was, I'm, I'm thinking, she's finna fall out if they don't hurt him again. And we was on the air. I just think in the name of Jesus, if we will just spend time in his presence, and as we spend time in his presence, man, when you show up, signs will show up, miracles will show up. Why? Because he showed up. You got to let him show up in your life every day, and you got to show up, and that's what you do. You focus on your relationship with him. And you start looking at everything, you quit asking for stuff because you're like, I got the most vital person in the world on the inside of me, the Holy Spirit. The whole, my relationship as a Christian is not about how much I know. It's not about how much I got. My relationship with the Holy Spirit is that I know him. I know him. He knows me. Hallelujah. Glory to be the book of Labasata. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, we must develop our spirits. And, and, and then Proverbs 20, 27 uh, uh, again confirms that, that the spirit of the man is a candle of the Lord. So, whatever the Holy Ghost uh, is going to do, he's going to do it through, through that spirit man. And if you're undeveloped in your spirit and you're not practicing the things of God, which is where I'm getting ready to go next, then, uh, you know, you're, you're going to miss it. So I guess the obvious question here before we move to the third one, the obvious question is how do you develop your spirit? All right, how do, if, if undeveloped spirit is going to be a hindrance to me hearing from God, how do I develop my spirit? Well, very simple, uh, reading and meditating on the Word of God. I mean, you, the supernatural is attached to the Word. If you're not attached to the Word, you're not attached to the supernatural. And so what happens is by getting in that Word and reading that Word and meditating that Word, now, there's a little difference. You can read the Word, but it, you're not meditating the Word until you're pondering that Word, until you're rolling it around in your mind, until you're thinking about it over and over and over again. There's something about meditating that Word that'll make you successful. It'll make you strong and that'll lead you in, a, in, a, in some mighty ways. So that, that's one way to develop your spirit. Another way is submitting to God's Word. You know, why would God continue to tell somebody something that never will do it? <laughs> I mean, think about that. Would you continue to talk to somebody and, and they don't ever do it? And so likewise, I, would, I wouldn't do the same thing. So we got to bow the knee to the Word of God that we're hearing and that we're meditating on. Here's another way to develop your spirit, prayer. I mean, spend time talking to God. Spend time talking to God. Somebody says, well, how long do that? Well, I mean, you know, half the morning, I'm just like singing in tongues. I'm singing in tongues. I'm just walking around just singing in tongues. I didn't realize I had reached the level of joy. And uh, you start doing that kind of stuff. What's going on in the world don't bother you? What's happening with people, dramas and all that kind of stuff? You realize you've been blessed with peace. And prayer helps to develop your spirit. Now, here's another way to develop your spirit, uh, worship and spending time in His presence. Worship is, a lot of people just don't understand worship. Worship is an intentional move to uh, go before God without expecting anything from Him. In other words, it's like, I am, I'm making you big. I'm building you up. I'm not, I'm not here for you to do nothing for me. If you don't never do nothing else for me, you've already done enough. I am here to just, 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 just give you praise and honor and, and tell you how awesome you are and, and to just kind of, in a sense, just brag on you and talk about the awesomeness of your work. You know, people, most of the time people go to God, they go to God asking for something and needing something. But when you're worshiping God, it's like that's something that can go on all day. Every time you look around, you're like, Lord, I just thank you for that. And Lord, look at what you did here. Who but you could do something like that? Lord, look at what you did there. Look at what you did for me. Look at that. You had me to go to sleep last night. I woke up this morning. I feel so good, and I give you praise. That kind of worship puts you outside of the, the drama and the, and the crazy stuff of this world. And so you, you train your spirit. You get, your, your spirit is being developed through worship, man. It's being developed through worship. And then, you know, here's another way to train your spirit, praying in the spirit, praying in tongues, and then listening to God's word to you. Praying in tongues and listening to God's word for you. I don't, I don't go around ev evaluating who's still praying in tongues or not. I do. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm okay. I ain't going to stop. I'm, no, I'm going to keep praying in tongues. But I like to pray in tongues, and then, you know, I like to just shut up and let God give him an opportunity to talk to me. You'll know if it's you and you'll know if it's God. Because sometimes, see, when God talks to you, he's saying stuff that you ain't even smart enough to say. And so you got, you got to understand that, wait a minute, man. 
I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. What I like to do is, Father, I thank you uh, that I believe I receive what I just prayed in the Holy Ghost. I release most holy faith for it to come to pass. Oh, and I just start worshiping and praising him. And then sometimes I just sit there and sometimes I just worship and praising him. And, and he, whether I'm sitting there quiet or just worshiping him and praising and thanking him, I, I hear, I hear it, but it's not coming from the outside in. It's coming from the inside up. And there's this word that comes, and I'm like, that's, that's God. I can't even, I, I even know where that came from. That's just so awesome what he said. And I'm just, and so now I'm tuning in all the time to what he might be saying to me. And, and you, know, you know, folks think, well, oh, that's just, a, that's just a wise man of God. No, that's a listening man of God. Just keep paying attention to him. And he starts showing you stuff and, and giving you the right side of the issue and not the wrong side of the issue. So if you'll do those things, reading and meditating in the Word, submitting to God's Word, spending that time in prayer, worshiping and spending time in His presence. I call it practicing the presence of God. Practicing the presence of God is being aware that you have God on your mind throughout the day. And when other things invade it, you want to kind of catch it because you're practicing the presence of God. And that, that's a powerful thing, man. And then also praying in the Spirit. Now let's look at this third one. Uh, unbelievable how the time goes by. Look at the third one. Uh, the third uh, hindrance to hearing from God is a spirit of deafness. You know, a deaf person in the natural can't hear. You know, there's a spirit of deafness, that spirit that says you, you can't hear God, you can't hear from God. All right, now, now how does that work? How does a person become deaf and they can't hear from God? Well, number one, listen to this, and I believe this is a huge, huge deal. Having unforgiveness will open you up to the tormentors. Having unforgiveness will open you up to the tormentors. In other words, if you walk in unforgiveness, eventually the tormentors, those evil, wicked, demonic forces, will begin to bring torturing thoughts to your life. They will begin to bring up painful memories in your life. They will begin to release, to release oppressing spirits and, and, and spirits of darkness into your life. There's a such thing of, uh, as torment. People think that, no, this is just happening to me. No, when you, when you walk in unforgiveness and refuse to get rid of that darkness in your life, then you, 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 you're going to go through torture. You're going to have tormenting thoughts. You're going to you're going to have these, these, these horrible memories. You, 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 you've got to deal with the unforgiveness. Some people think it's all right that I don't deal with it. If you don't deal with it, it will deal with you. And, uh, and then you're trying to figure out how come I can't hear from God. You're too cluttered. You're too cluttered with the bad memories. You're too cluttered with the torturing thoughts. You're too cluttered with all of that stuff that comes by maintaining unforgiveness. And uh, it's, just, it's just clogging your hearing up. So the heart of the spirit, man, grows when you're in unforgiveness. It grows hard and it grows insensitive uh, to the voice of God. In fact, Paul tried to warn us, if you go to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26 and 27, Ephesians 4, 26 and 27, Paul tried to warn us of some of these things that would happen. He said, be angry, but he said, sin not. And he says, don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. Go to the next verse, verse 27. He said, neither, neither give place to the devil. All right, when, you're, when, you, when, when you continue in unforgiveness, you give place to the devil. Watch this. Uh, because when you're operating that kind of way and, you know, you don't do anything about it, you, you've given place to the devil. And the devil's going to come with everything he possibly can. Anger, unforgiveness, jealousy, those things cause deafness. When you're walking in those fleshy, it causes you not to be able to hear from God. What it means is you're so cluttered with anger, jealousy, unforgiveness, you're not going to be able to hear. So we must get rid of the bitterness. We got to get rid of the resentment. We got to get rid of the unforgiveness out of our spirit. Those things will hinder you from, from hearing from God. And listen, you can't afford to go days without being open to hear what God wants to say.